Hi, I'm Ellen Boris Nolan. I'm the Director of Career Development at the Career Center in Mount St. Mary College. And if you are watching this, you are going to be learning about interviewing strategies today. The first thing that I want you to remember is that no matter what your major is, it could be marketing, it could be teaching, it could be nursing, you're, you are a marketer when it comes to doing your resume and your interview. And so remember yourself and your main product. Your product is you, and you will be trying to sell yourself in an interview. So let me cover some of the most important tips that I think that you need to remember. The first thing is that no matter what, you want to plan on getting the job offer. Whether or not it's a job that you're really interested in, go through the interview, listen to what the interviewer has to say, what they have to offer in terms of experience, job responsibilities, and at the end of the interview, thank them and then go home and think about it and whether or not this is a job that you would like. Remember, it's your decision as well as far as whether or not you feel that this is a good fit for you. Okay, the second thing that you want to remember is that you shouldn't be afraid to talk about yourself. I'll give you a good situation. When I was first looking for a job, I went on several job interviews and was not getting any callbacks. And finally, I got several interviews. I went to about the third interview with this one place and ended up not getting the job. I called and I found out why I didn't get the job. And what they told me was that they felt that I wasn't that outgoing. And I thought to myself, why would they get that feeling? And I think that it was probably because I didn't talk enough about myself and they thought that I was quiet and shy. So I realized that I needed to say more about myself. And of course, when you talk about yourself, you're talking about the skills that you have. In our society, most people are not that comfortable with talking about themselves. But in this interview, it may be your one and only time to be able to explain to an employer what your capabilities and your skills are. And you want to make sure that you do that. So don't be afraid to talk about yourself. The next thing kind of goes hand in hand with this because even though you want to talk about yourself, the next thing is that your responses should not take more than about a minute. So even though you want to talk about yourself, your answer should be short, concise, and to the point, just like I'm making this point right now. Finally, you want to also cite examples anytime that you can as far as skills that you may have. So let's just take, for instance, you are applying for a job as a lion tamer. I know that that's what you're going to be doing for the rest of your life. But what you want to do is if someone asks you, do you have any experience working with lions? You might say that you don't have experience working with lions. You do have experience working with animals, wild animals. And you can give an example as to maybe a time that you worked with one of these animals and they got unruly and you had to tame them, much like you would do the lion. So anytime you can use an example as far as your skills, that's going to say a lot more about what you're able to do, knowing that you have actually done it in the past as opposed to just learning it in a classroom. Finally, always speak in positive terms. No matter what the job is that you have done in the past, supervisors, coworkers, never say anything bad about them because they may take it that you're a complainer and that you may complain eventually about the job that you're applying for and no one wants someone that's going to be complaining. So always speak in positive terms. Okay, additionally there's some skills that employers really like and very quickly I'm going to name some of them. Interpersonal skills, written and oral communication skills. Computer skills, it will depend on your field. Leadership skills are probably relevant for just about any job that you might go on teamwork that you might have done also because you'll probably be working with other people. So these are some of the skills that employers like to know about. So if you can work them into your conversation, that's probably a good thing to talk about. All right, now, now that we've given you uh, the basics as far as an interview and how you should handle yourself, let's talk a little bit about the four phases of an interview. But just before we do that, let's talk a little bit about how to prepare for the interview. When you prepare for an interview, you should know as much as you can about the job. Find out what the job description is, 
talk to people, go on the web and see if you see similar job descriptions and what kinds of things that are expected of you. And those would be the types of things that you would then want to talk about in the job interview. The other thing that you'll want to do is research the organization. A lot of people don't do this. This is something that is vital anymore. Employers are expecting that you would be able to tell them a little bit about what you learned about their organization on the web. So be sure that you do that. Okay, once you've researched the job description and the responsibilities and the organization, you'll also want to know where you have to go so that you get there punctual and you're not nervous that day getting there. So if you can do that ahead of time, that would probably be good. And then also know the interviewer's name so that when you meet them, you can state their name and introduce yourself. Okay, some things you should bring with you on the interview. Always bring extra copies of your resumes. And if the job requires writing, you should bring some writing samples. And again, depending on your major, if there's any type of work samples that you can bring with you that would attest to your abilities, those would be the types of things that you would want to bring. Everything should be brought in a little portfolio so that your papers and everything are neat and crisp when you hand them to an employer. Okay, now we'll talk about the interview process. So, the first part of the interview is before it even starts. People will be assessing you long before you get into the room and start your formal interview. Be aware that a secretary could be eyeing you and noticing if you seem comfortable as you're sitting, waiting to go into the office. Someone that you might meet in the parking lot could be the president of the company and you don't know it. So as soon as you step foot on those premises, you should be on your best behavior. The other thing that you want to remember is that 93, yes, 93% of whatever happens in an interview is based upon your looks and how you conduct yourself. So it's not so much what you say, but how you say it and how you present yourself. And that's what we're gonna talk about right now. So the first thing is your visual appearance. Within 15 seconds, you will be making an impression. I'm sure that you looked at me today and you've already assessed what you think of me. And so that's what an employer is also going to be doing with you. So you want to maintain good eye contact, just like I'm looking at you right now. And you want to be able to converse in a way that sets the interviewer at ease. So you should introduce yourself when you meet them and say, Hi, I'm Ellen Boris Nolan. Nice to meet you. If you know their name, like I had just said to you, you should say their name as well. Um, you should maintain good posture so that when you're standing, stand tall and erect. You don't want to look stiff. And when you sit, you should be sitting in a chair comfortable. If you can see how I'm sitting, I'm comfortable. I'm not standing or sitting like this and looking like I'm nervous. Don't I look like I'm nervous right now? My shoulders are hunched up. My eyes are kind of open. You don't want to look like this. You want to look like this, okay? All right, the next thing is verbal. Like I said, when you introduce yourself, you'll want to say their name and introduce yourself. I'm going to give you a good example. I'm going to pretend that I'm talking to you right now. And first I'm going to give you the bad example. Hi. How are you? Okay, that was the bad example. Now I'm going to say, Hi, Mary Smith. I'm Ellen Boris Nolan. Nice to meet you. Wasn't that better? That's how you want to look. Okay. And then finally, you want to give them a handshake when you greet them. Whether you're male or female, whether they're male or female, this is a business transaction, so give them a handshake. Your handshake should be firm and it shouldn't be too hard, but you want to give them a nice firm handshake. Okay, that was the first part of the interview. Second part is general information sharing. At this point, they'll be asking you a question, tell me a little bit about yourself. Then since there may be one that will take a little bit longer than that one minute that I gave you tell them about even though you have already given them your resume give them what year you're in what your major is what school you go to a brief job history what you have done and then most importantly you want to tell them what you believe are your skills and qualifications 
And these may be personal characteristics that you have as well. Perhaps that you're a very hard worker, or that you're very responsible and reliable, or that you're very detail-oriented. This type of information is not necessarily on the resume that you have given them. So you want to convey this to them, that type of information. The next thing is they would probably tell you a little about the, about the company and perhaps about the position. And this is a good time for you to listen carefully so that any additional information that they may give you relating to the company or the job, you can use to your advantage in telling them why you would be a good fit. Which brings me to a good point. When you are going on a job interview, I often liken it to a first date. A first date, you're both assessing each other, trying to decide if it's a good fit. And usually you're a little reticent as far as letting the other person know if you're really interested in them because you don't want to put yourself out on a line or you know a position where you may be rejected. In a job interview, that's where it differs. You want to be able to say to them, I really want to work for this place. This is why I want to work for you and give them reasons that you have learned about the company so that they know that you're being honest and truthful and saying that you would like to work for them. Okay, so the third part of the interview is the pivotal question period. And this is by far the toughest part of the job interview. They will be asking you key questions that relate to the job that you are applying for. And they'll be very specific. So you should prepare yourself Go on the uh, internet and find some typical interview questions and rehearse those. If you can rehearse them with someone so that they can give you feedback or at least say them out loud so that it's not just an answer in your head and you have actually rehearsed it out loud. That's often why they say to go on a lot of job interviews so that you get experience in how to answer these questions. A couple of the questions that you may want to be aware of is a question such as tell me what your biggest weakness is. This is a hard question to answer. You don't want to give an answer that will jeopardize your chances for getting this job. But you do want to be honest with them because let's face it we all have flaws. Tell them something about yourself and then tell them about ways that you have been working to improve it. Don't make it anything too major so that even if you are improving it, that it is such a big flaw that it would still harm your chances. If you use an example such as that you were working on your time management skills, you might tell them steps that you have taken to improve your time management and let them know that you have been working on them and this is what has been the result and that you continue to work on them. This way they know that you recognize flaws that you would be receptive to criticism, constructive criticism, if they give this to you. And it will certainly show that you recognize these things in yourself.